Uh, Chris Harris Jr., while the television audience is away, first at uh, uh, two times I say hello to you. How are you, sir? Doing good, man. Doing real good. Yes, you are. Uh, since we're television only, and this is a visual medium as opposed <laughs> to the radio simulcast, let's uh, can we check out the kicks on kicks. Chris Harris Jr., please? Woo, baby! What do, what do we have here, sir? What do we have? Some, some new Gucci's, man. 2020. New version. Okay. Those are Gucci's. Yeah. Kind of um, like a training kind, I guess. I guess so. I know, by the way, I, I appreciate the uh, laces matching the rest of Those everything. Are phenomenal. Would you would you take these? Uh, I mean, yes, but it's a little uh, out of my price bracket. Oh, is that right? Yeah, they're pretty expensive, man. <laughs> well, I got lots of. Is there Gucci's or? Uh, just because they're new, man. It's a new style. Yeah. I don't think they came out with this style, so it's it just the okay. new version of the, what they got. Be, let's be modest on behalf of Chris. Uh, how much? How much are these? Would these I run? mean, I think they're they're pushing. Well, I mean, the Price is Right rules closest without going <laughs> over. Can I, you can I, you can I, you give me some uh, some of the music here, please? Closest without going over. Chris Harris with the new 2020. So without going over. Gucci's. My closest guess. Without my going guess going would over be here. like 850. Eight hundred fifty dollars. I should bid. You say twelve fifty. TJ Jefferson, do you want to you want to come in here and bid as well? Eight fifty, twelve fifty. You want to go one dollar? Go one dollar. Twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. Twelve fifty one. And I'll go one dollar. Oh, one dollar. Uh, well, how much the actual retail price is? It's twelve to twelve fifty. Oh, he won't even oh, say. Oh, did you look him up? <laughs> no, I swear. Oh. No, no, no. But you said. I, excuse me. You don't win. You said. You went over. It probably, it's probably more with the taxes. So you went over. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, Mike. We have some nice parting gifts for you, and they're not the these shoes. I win both jokings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and both <laughs> shoes. You and you and Brockman's new shoes too. That he's rocking hey, today. Mine today. Oh. Wow, By those the way. are beautiful. I think Impressive. everybody wears size 12, so it's not very hard to find my size. size. Impressive. Okay, most people do. Very good. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm an 11, Chris, if you just want to loan those out. <laughs> they might be cheaper with just regular laces. <laughs> <laughs> just put on the white laces, and maybe they'll be more in your price bracket. Back with Chris in a moment. The pride of Tulsa and Bixby, Oklahoma, yeah. by way of Kansas, now in his ninth season in the NFL from the Denver Broncos, and now, I guess, of your free agent class of uh, defensive backs, Chris Harris Jr., good to see yeah. you back here on the show, sir. Doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Did Oklahoma never come knocking on your door? I had one offer at Kansas, and that was it. That's it? Yeah. Who was the one who offered you? Who was there at the time? Uh, man, Gino. Mangino. Yeah, Mangino came and seen me at basketball practice and then offered me. Now, imagine when Mangino walks into a basketball gym, it's he's easy to spot. Everybody can see him, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, man. He has definitely big presence coming in there. And this is this is a, no 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 offense, um but uh what how what what'd you play in the hoops court? You point guard? Yeah, point guard. You're point guard. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of run the show Six like foot? Chris Paul. 6 foot? 6 foot? Nah, five eleven. Five eleven. More. <laughs> you were more Isaiah Thomas. Yeah, I was. Were you just, a little taller than him? I'm. I'm kind of like Chris Paul, man. I get everybody involved. Still can get a bucket, and I still do do it all, man. Speaking of which, Chris Paul's Oklahoma City Thunder is on fire. Oh yeah, he right now. Good last night. Do you root for the Oklahoma City Thunder? Oh yeah, That's your definitely. Team. Nah, Lakers are my team for sure. Le oh, okay. I've always been a Laker fan. Even since sitting, Kobe. You gotta. Now, okay, I'm just need to do the math right here. Um, did Oak? Were you still in Oklahoma when? When Seattle sent the Thunder your yes, way, yes, okay. Yes, that's uh, see, I was already a Lakers fan by the time the Thunder got there. Okay, but I, I kind of joined Thunder too. Okay, I root for those guys. So Kobe's your guy. Oh yeah, that's sure. your, growing up. That's that's your guy. Oh yeah, Kobe. Oh yeah. But do you root for the Thunder now at all? Or oh no, yeah, yeah, really? definitely. Okay. Yeah, I like Shay uh, Gilgis, Gilgis Alexander. I like him. They're doing real. I mean, the last yeah. month. Nobody's been hotter in the Western Conference than the Oklahoma City Thunder right now. Because Chris Paul, I mean, he's going to organize the team, make sure they have a structure. There won't be freestyling out there. You know what I mean? So, right. Uh, they're, they're, the the two point guard combo guards that they're doing, it's kind of working out good okay. for them. Are you team uh, Perk or team KD based on last night's Twitter beef between the I'm two? I'm going to go with team KD. Because I think he made the right decision for his career. Uh, he needed to, need to win an NBA championship, and that was the best spot for him to go. Let's be honest here. You know, I know you've enjoyed your time with the Denver yeah. Broncos, and you put your time in there. Yeah. But, you know, Chiefs come knocking on your door, and they give you the right contract in the right yeah. spot. You're wearing red next year, right? I'm listening to everybody, man. <laughs> I'm listening to everybody I for imagine. sure. 
And uh, I mean, Kansas, uh, I've been to school. I went to school there. And yep. so that's like another home for me, too. Uh, a lot of big following there. So uh, I'm definitely looking at everybody, man. But uh, like you said, I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't be a good fit. So what do you, how are you, I guess, you're approaching your free agent year. This is your first time you're a free agent, too, right? Yeah. Nine years into your career. Yeah. And you have the hammer as to where you want to go play. Yeah, first time. And um, it's just... Just kind of be able to figure out what's the best fit for me, you know, and best situation for me and uh, what teams really want me. And uh, so I'm interested and excited to get that. Uh, me playing in league nine years, I got coaches all over the NFL that's sure. coached me, who I worked with. So I got to, they know how, they know uh, what type of person I am, what type of player I am. So I think it's going to work out very well. Is there any chance you could go back to Denver? Yeah, there is a chance. There is, man. Um, we know that uh, they definitely, we definitely need corners there. So uh, I definitely know I'm probably high on their list for sure. So let me take my pen out and cross out the get Chris to trash <laughs> Elway part on my card right there. Let me cross that out. <laughs> Actually, it's not on my card. I'm just drawing lines where there was space. I love Elway, man. That's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Oh yeah, man. Okay. We talked this year, this year a lot, man, and got a lot of communication uh, from where I was confused at. Uh, what were you year. confused during the um, Just the whole offseason, man. Just seeing if they wanted me, things like that. Um, uh -huh. How I had to hold out to try to – I tried to get a long-term deal here, yes, but sir, it didn't that. work out. Mm -hmm. And um, so just trying to see where the where the organization was with me, and um, it kind of cleared it up for me. So was there any part during the Denver season where there was mm -hmm. uh, in the locker room – an offense defensive yeah. sort of schism yeah. for the Vic Fangio's first year there. We Chris. we actually didn't happen, man. It actually did not happen. Um I think everybody on the team kind of jailed pretty good, man. We didn't have um a lot there wasn't a lot of fights or anything like that or okay. anything. Everybody jailed together, man, and you really don't see that from teams losing teams, you know. There's usually a lot of a lot of fights and things like that, but coach Fangio was able to keep it square. Um offense was able I mean, we had three different quarterbacks this year. So, I mean, yes, we didn't did. have time to, to pout, man. We had to rally around those guys. Well, what about Locke? It looks yeah. like he's got an it factor just from watching TV, yeah. just from watching the way he plays, watching the way that he's mouthing the lyrics to yeah. whatever <laughs> rap music's being played yeah. uh, up there in Denver. What, what about from your perspective? That's, I think that's like a um, fresh breath of air for us, man. That's something that we needed. We've mm -hmm. been looking for that for, I mean, Super Bowls four years ago. Uh, five years ago now. So we've been looking for that, man. A quarterback is going to bring that energy, bring that spark for guys. And um, he's done that those last five games. And hopefully he can just build on that, continue to improve, and get better for next year. Yeah, because it, it, he, he's going to be your starting quarterback in 2020 in the Denver yeah. Broncos area, right? I mean, that he, how, yeah. was he, how was he in the locker room? How was he? He's great in the when, locker room, man. Okay. I mean, all the time. He's always studying. So I'm always trying to give him tips from what I see around. Because mm -hmm. I played a lot of these teams. And, I know what they do on defense, so I just always try to give them tips and things like that. And he he takes them, man. He's he's right there asking for it. all the all our quarterbacks are like that. So uh, I like the group that we had, and uh, they just young, man. Just got to get that experience. Chris Harris Jr. here on the Rich Eisen Show. All right, I'm going to turn you into uh, a member of the paparazzi right now. Oh man. Okay. The toughest team that you faced this year that's still left in the playoffs. You faced the Vikings. You faced the Packers. Obviously, week three was mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys were still feeling your way in the season. Mm -hmm. You faced the Titans, you beat them, but Mariota was that was yeah. that was when they said we're going to Tannehill, yeah. a different team, and then you just took the tank Texans to you know, I mean you just yeah. broke them apart in Houston. Uh, the toughest team that you faced is which one? Chiefs, KC. I mean their offense is dynamic. Uh, they got the players all over the field. It's like a track meet team. You know what I mean four by one team when you see those guys and. Uh, and with, a, with a big receiver tight end, Kelsey. And I think they're hot right now. So whoever has to see those boys uh, is going to be tough. And uh, so I, I'm riding with them right now. And that because you, you know them, your division opponent. Oh, yeah. That's why I even left them off the list right here. But oh, yeah. they're just, the tough, like out of out of everybody. Oh, yeah. I, for a defense to go into a game. And uh, other than Lamar Jackson, we didn't get to play him. So I don't I mean, it's Aaron Rodgers you had to yeah. try and – their offense isn't as complicated as the Chiefs. You know what I mean? The Chiefs do so much formation, so many more motions. Uh, it's the Packers are they're kind of a stagnant team, more standstill type of offense compared to the Chiefs. No kidding. They keep you moving, man. So you always got to be aware of different formations, things like that when you play KC. And it just you know one of the moments of the year, Damian Williams is just busting one straight up the yeah. gut. 
Oh, yeah. And, I mean, if they start running the ball, it's over. Well, but he's not to be – no one's catching him, but Tyreek yeah. Hill ran him down. He's Just, the only one that can catch well, him. Well, I think because I think Tyreek was saying after the game that Damian Williams always says he's the fastest on the team, mm-hmm. and that was Tyreek Hill's he knows way he's not of letting fastest. him know in the game to let him know who's fastest. What is it like trying mm-hmm. to cover him? I don't know why he thinks he's the fastest <laughs> on her team. I mean, Tyreek Hill – is by far the yeah, fastest. That's in the what NFL. I mean. What's it like to to cover Tyreek Hill? Do you think? I mean, <laughs> he just made a noise. Yeah. You just uh, you just really for me. I just try to be physical with him. Uh, that's the only thing you can do is kind of slow him down. Uh, try to match his routes. Uh, they run the craziest routes in KC, man. That, uh, this year he ran like a shallow, uh, a shallow f- uh, wheel on me, and that's never been like. That never is ran okay, by Okay, so NFL. it looks like it's a shallow cross. Yeah. Okay, so he's on one side of the field. You're with him. Yes. You're trying to trail him, yeah. in a way, or cover him mm-hmm. from a trail position. Yeah, man, zero. Okay. Got the whole field. Okay, mm-hmm. so he's. it looks like he's just going to keep running across the field, and instead yeah. he just turns up like a wheel route. Yes, and that's what Andy Reid does, man. He's able to draw up the craziest routes for these guys, and they, they have the speed – Enough to for those guys to get the protection, get the blocking, and still run these playground routes. Well, and it, it, it's interesting you mentioned, again, Chris Harris Jr. here on the Rich Eisen mm-hmm. Show. The offensive line needs to block yeah. long enough for somebody even as fast as Tyree Kill to run a route like that. Exactly. Or you got 15 back there buying some time himself. You got double that. So you got the buy him time, and they got, the, they got a solid offensive line, the Chiefs. And then also with the speed receiver. So I just think they're just very tough, man. I don't – I don't see a team uh, right now that can only knock them off is the Ravens. And the only reason why I say the Ravens can knock them off is because they have three corners, really four, mm-hmm. if you add in Brandon Carr with them, because he can do all, all the things too. But they, they have the four corners that can match up with KC and then the pass rusher. So that's the only reason why I think they're the only team that can knock them well, off. Well, the good thing for Kansas City is, uh, you know, uh, in taking on the Ravens is that – the factor of I didn't know Lamar was that fast yeah. and that big mm-hmm. and that talented because they've never faced him before. That's mm-hmm. gone. Kansas City has twice mm-hmm. beat him twice. Once last yes. year, once already this year. But without Peters. That's true. Marcus Peters, he's that much of a difference maker. Well, huh? you got four legit corners now to where you can't really – you can't pick on anybody, you know what I mean? And, and then they have the pass rush. Mm-hmm. So – I think adding him, they're kind of similar to how our defense was 2015 with the three corners. I think uh, that's the only way that you can kind of slow Pat Mahomes down. And then have somebody like Vaughn. Then you got Earl Thomas back right. there deep. Earl's the, the ma- I, Earl's a Hall of Famer. I mean, oh, yeah. There's no doubt about that. So um, you like the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl? You have them win it all, Chris Ooh. Harris? Give me your Super Bowl 54 no, I can't pick prediction. Them to win the Super Bowl. Why is that? Because you, you. I'm Devin Bronco. I understand Mac. that, but we're paparazzi now. I'm not. I'm not host talking to Denver Bronco free agent. We are two guys win. in the media talking about this game. I can never say the Chiefs are going to win it. Well, I can never do that. I can never. Okay, so then who's coming out of the <laughs> NFC? I'll say 49ers. Why do you like them? Their defense, man. They got the best D line, I think. Um, and then uh, they run the football. So I'm going to go with the 49ers. Run the football, great defense. Okay, 49ers versus Ravens then. Versus Baltimore. Okay, and then who do you got to win all that? I got Baltimore. You do? Defense, secondary. You haven't talked about offense pretty much at all here. I know you're a defensive guy. I talked about Kansas City offense. You did. You did grant me that. Yeah. You definitely did. <laughs> um, and how does how is offense, uh, I mean, pardon me, how is weather, do you think, going to affect something? Because, again, Mike Del Tufo's weather report is coming yeah. up. That's one yep. way for me to tease the flop yeah. sweat that's about to hit. Nope. Uh, but also, uh, it's supposed to be pretty darn nasty in Baltimore on Saturday yeah. night. Uh, what do you think about that? I think that helps Baltimore because they want to run the football anyway. Derrick Henry's a monster. Now, you don't want to th- – walk me through a, bi- mm-hmm. a business decision with somebody like Derrick Henry and somebody like you. If it's I'm, 5'11", as you pointed if out. I'm, if I'm the Titans, I'm running I'm running outside to the corners on the Ravens. If I see one little thing, is there a little – they have – well, Humphreys is a great tackler. Mm-hmm. But Jimmy and Peters versus Henry, I, I might have to go with Henry. You will take it. the business decision – uh, I'm running uh, outside. Derrick Henry, if I'm King the Henry, you, that's what you're doing. Oh yeah. And if it's raining like cats and dogs, that could be very helpful Perfect. for for Tennessee too. As oh well. yeah. And then I'm giving AJ Brown the ball too a lot. What do you like about him? He's just physical, man. I don't think 
I don't think I've seen a receiver as strong as him since I've been in the league. Like, other than him or DK or whatever, but A.J. Brown, like, he's like a running back playing receiver. Mm -hmm. And he's real strong. So, um, I could see that could be a potential uh, problem for the Ravens, too. You mentioned D.K. Metcalf. That guy is yeah. just, yeah. He's, I don't know how these guys, him and Courtland Sutton, I don't know how they didn't go first round top ten picks. Sutton's, I Sutton's pretty amazing, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. He's a beast. Um, good to see you here. Before I let you go, chrisharrisjr.com slash foundation is how that you can mm. check things out of what uh, you are up to um, in terms of your uh, philanthropy. You were yeah. Walter Payton Man of the Year candidate a couple years ago. Congratulations yeah. on that. That's Appreciate amazing you. to do. Uh, and you got a kid, too, now? You got a little baby? Four girls, man. You have four girls? Four girls, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. That's a lot of estrogen. All the time, man. Yeah? All the time. Four, I got you great got patience. Four girls. Yeah. Okay. Four babies. In search of Chris Harris the third. <laughs> Uh, we got to take some time. I mean, no, no pressure. We got to take some time off, man. No, cr no pressure. No pressure. Uh, thanks for joining, Chris. Oh, yeah, really no appreciate problem, that. Man. At Chris Harris Jr. on both Twitter and Instagram. Stay in touch uh, as you're going through oh, yeah, your free man. agent period when you sign oh, somewhere. Yeah. And we call Super Bowl. Up. I got you, oh, man. You're, oh, you're going to be coming down to Miami oh, yeah. as well? All right, we'll be down there, too. I look forward to seeing you. Oh, yeah. That's Chris Harris Jr. right here on the Rich Eisen Show. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.